Aloha, thank you so much for joining me once again and today I have a wonderful guest all the way from back home in Aotearoa, New Zealand but before we get to that, yes, thank you for joining us for our Talanoa talk story Share to Inspire where it is hoped that the stories or story that my guest is going to share today it is hoped that her story will push you along, okay? Everybody needs a little bit of push, get along then, get out there and do your thing and reach your goal, okay? So I'm going to stop talking because I love to talk a little bit more than I should with my intro, but and, and, and I just did. <laughs> no more. Folks, please welcome my wonderful friend here all the way from back home, Miss Roseanne Liang. Hi, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you aloha. doing? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. What's going on with you? Um, it is, uh, it's a sunny day here in Auckland. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. Yay. Um, everything is, is, is okay. Uh, I mean, the world, the world almost exploded this year, but, uh, I think we're just, we're just holding it together. Yes. And okay yeah. is okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think. Cool. Cool. Folks, this is when I, uh, this short story is, um, when I first met, uh, Roseanne, it was in, um, Auckland, uh, at Aote Center, uh, your sister, whom she's going to keep coming into this conversation, but it's about you. <laughs> Her and I, uh, your sister Renee, were, um, we were doing a theater piece at um, Aotea Center and then we were just chilling at the chairs out there and I saw you walk along, or actually your sister told me you were walking towards us. So that was the first time I met you. And I got to listen to you two have a little chit chat. And my first impression was, wow, these two are very, 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 very intelligent uh, peoples and they're very powerful. I was just listening to you guys chit chat. I thought it was amazing. There could be no story there. I should have wrote down what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> but now, here we are. Please welcome my uh, good friend here, Roseanne uh, Liang. Hello again. <laughs> Hi. Kia ora. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Please, could you tell us a little bit? about you. Who are you? Um, my name is Roseanne. I am the youngest of three daughters. Um, uh, the the sister that you speak of, Renee, is the oldest sister. Then there's a middle sister called Rhea and then there's me, Roseanne. I'm the baby. I'm the spoiled one. Um, I, <laughs> I took a different path. My my sisters and my dad are in the medical profession in a in special in special specialized categories we have two pediatricians and a surgeon mm -hmm. and um, I took a different path into filmmaking um, so that's what I am now I'm a screenwriter and a director and I live and work from Auckland New Zealand and you are a fine fine artist um, thank you so I'm so glad to see the evolution that you have become the things that you've done which is great um, okay well let's get straight into it big question what has motivated you to kick on in the entertainment industry and especially as a filmmaker what has motivated you and where has inspiration come from to keep you going uh this, this is a huge question that you're asking me Misa. um it is uh there's so many different things that have contributed to why i keep going and what and what keeps me going when when i get down because i think in the arts it can feel really hopeless you don't go into the arts to make money you don't go into the arts to um necessarily uh have a comfortable life <laughs> um you don't get go into the arts to take a lot of rest you it's actually the opposite mm -hmm. um there's this old confucius saying you know uh choose a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life and that's nonsense because when you choose a job that you love you work harder and longer hours and have no boundaries between your work and your life because you care so much about what you're doing that you do it 24 7 from the moment that you wake up to the little snatches of sleep that you do get um and it, it just eats eats everything but um it, it it somehow it seems worth it because it's it's creative and it, it it's vital and it keeps it keeps you alive it keeps you feeling like life is worth living i guess that's for me that's how much i care about um the arts 
Um, so I guess my upbringing was that my parents were tiger parents and um, they were all about you have to achieve to the best of your ability. You always achieve to your very best. We're not going to accept anything less than your best. Um, and if you do, you know, don't don't even think about doing anything less than your best because we will not accept it. Um, so, <laughs> so, so there was that. And so I came from, you know, my sisters were very, um, they came they they i guess they broke the ground for me but the ground that they broke was at such a high level we my parents sent us to do you want to say something about that i mean yeah i was just gonna say, gonna say hey so did you have a, like a free ride when, when you mentioned they broke the the, the was there was did you just come in and say oh, oh i can do this wall as opposed to no you know, no, it wasn't. I, I wish. I wish it was that easy. But the, unfortunately, they're they're so ambitious and they're so impressive and they're so good at what they do that the bar that they set is is so high that I had to just because I didn't want to be the stupid sister. I I mean, and this wasn't pressure that my parents put on me. This was pressure I put on myself. Is that they set the bar so high that if I didn't reach that bar, even just basically reach it, then I felt like I was a failure. I was the dumb sister. That's 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 how that's how I thought, I guess. I think maybe I was naturally or genetically disposed to being a competitive, ambitious person. But certainly my parents instilled in us a really strong work ethic. Um, and they, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was academic, it was math, science, um, uh, lit, you know, literacy, and all, mm. but it was also piano, ballet, speech and drama, wow. you know, you, so, so, it, so a very holistic approach to, to, skills and talents um yeah so yeah the, so the, so that keeps me motivated that i i can't i can't not do something because to do nothing and to be lazy is the worst thing i think yep. and that's been drum that's been drummed into me since i was a kid i totally agree with you you gotta do something you gotta do something hey yeah. you mentioned um there's some beautiful gems that you brought up you mentioned um work ethics and you gotta you gotta gotta, gotta. Sorry, that reminded me of, wow, you being in NZ rig, is a rugby mad country. You got to be at the, when you're at the top of the level, you got to be there as the All Blacks. You got to stay at the top. You work for ethics to get there. You got to stay there. And sorry, I just had to bring in sports there. <laughs> but you also. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You also. We mentioned, have to. We have to talk about sports. Yeah. When you're yeah. at the top of your game, you, you got to have good work <laughs> ethics. Uh, you also mentioned. Um, uh, that saying, uh, do something that you love and da, da 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 Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work out, right? But yeah. could you talk about, you mentioned uh, Tiger family. Can yeah. you explain to to me, well, to everyone, what do you mean by Tiger? I think we all know, but in your own words, what do you think by Tiger? And what is the Tiger um, parent? I kind of, I thought I heard you being a little bit of a tiger, but could you, because when you're talking <laughs> about work, work ethics, you gotta go, and all these other activities that you, uh, that you did, um, could you tell us what is a tiger family and what, or parent, and what is your interpretation of that? Um, I think, I think a tiger parent is someone, is a, I mean, there's been, you know, there's been books written about. There's, there's a, there's a famous book called Tiger Mom, mm. about, um, you, you know, about these typical, usually immigrant parents, mm -hmm. who come from a place and and settle somewhere, and then they teach their children to be a certain way, and they're they're usually very strict. Uh, they can be controlling. They can be um, very kind of. Um, uh, involved, uh, they, it's a lot of telling you what to do rather than um, being nice. It's it's about parents who want their children to enter life with um, the most opportunities. Um, and, you know, most children just want to play and do things that, they, that children want to do. But tiger parents want their children to achieve. Um, because they because they feel from their point of view that if a child achieves at, from a young age, then when they reach adulthood, they'll have more opportunity. 
they'll have more opportunity than their own pa- than their own parents so that they can um, be successful in the in the new society mm-hmm. i think i think that i think that's what the general idea of a tiger parent is yeah. um but but i mean a tiger parent comes with a lot of um negative connotations mm. it can come with negative connotations in that tiger parents are strict they're not very loving they're not uh, emotionally open they you know they and and that's over time I've, i i think i've softened on that you know i i think my parents came from a traditional chinese upbringing and i grew up in a western liberal upbringing in new zealand and i always thought that my parents um didn't love me or they weren't proud of me you know they 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 were always just always just telling me off mm-hmm. it just felt like they were always mm-hmm. criticizing yeah. but i think over the years um as i've matured i realized that just because my parents tell me off um and this is quite common amongst um immigrant parents mm-hmm. is that what well, you you'll come home and they'll say have you eaten and that's the first thing they say they don't say hello how are you they say have you eaten and then while you're eating they say why are you eating so much <laughs> and you're like why why are you constantly criticizing me but then i realized that that's their love language mm-hmm. they they're saying these things because they care about you they 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 crack the whip and they want you to achieve a pluses in your exams because yep. they believe in you um and believing in you means that um they they love you i think mm-hmm. and they respect you because they think you're capable of these things um and and so I, i right now i appreciate my parents for that work ethic because it's never left me um and i mean yes there i think there is a balance to be had um yeah. with just learning how to uh like i i i do i do i've i've learned meditation and i've, uh-huh. I've and I, and i realized that you know physical health is also very important to your to your mental and physical well-being mm-hmm. um so there is a balance to be had but i but i do i love um in learning how to have a good work ethic i i i end up enjoying work work mm-hmm. is not work work is um my calling so so it feels good it feels good to work to me for me wow that sounds so uh so familiar we better move uh move the topic along <laughs> okay <laughs> we we talked enough about that yeah 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 i don't want to share my stories yeah. about <laughs> but well you are so right um love can come in different forms right i guess we just have to learn or see the code to be able to understand that mm-hmm. um you you do speak uh, a lot of what, those are wise words and they do sound familiar to uh, not only my upbringing but i'm sure for a lot of other people um do you think that so I'm going to go back as a child when you heard those words what are you doing should you be doing this or do that do you think they kind of uh, harden you up to to um consider well why are they saying all of these things to me I, i should you know toughen up so to speak uh, that probably comes from that mentality of being in a sport mad uh, culture back there but did that kind of tweak your thinking at such a young age i think that i think i was always quite a strong willed person mm-hmm. and i think um really it's about the it's about um if everyone is different everyone the you know nature versus nurture some mm-hmm. people come out naturally yes. shy so if you're constantly criticizing someone who is who naturally um Need, needs a different method of being talked to then i don't think that 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 mode of parenting is particularly helpful um it just so happened that the three of us were overachievers and we um <laughs> like we when when my parents said you know i will accept nothing less than an a plus on your maths exam we were able to achieve that but if i hadn't if i was really bad at maths and they they kept on going why are you getting these terrible marks why are you doing this i would have felt hopeless i would have felt oh that i'm not i'm nothing i'm i'm worth nothing but because i knew because they knew and i knew that i was capable of it then then it, it was a slightly different um uh situation i'm not saying that 
it's good for everyone. I, and, and certainly I know of um, other immigrant families where you have tiger parenting and you've ended up with children who just are resentful mm, and, and have yeah. heaps of self-esteem issues. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, I, I think my dad was, was um, you know, he, he's a debater. He, 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 he was a debater when he was a kid himself. And so I learned how to debate. I learned how to argue. Do you know what I mean? Like argue in a robust way that doesn't, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily, that isn't destructive, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cr critical, mm -hmm. critical thinking, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reminded, see, as you know, doing research is a wonderful thing. So I did a little bit of research on you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Your successes, the successes you have now, they're wonderful, but I want to take you back to a moment in time where this was a huge thing as, as a teenager. You got, um, sorry, my notes are sideways. You at, you went to St. Cuffs, right? Yeah. Hmm. I found out you got the ducks. <laughs> yeah, but this is the, what I mean by the bar. <laughs> my two sisters had been ducks before me. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that year for me was like just like I was biting my nails because if I if I couldn't be ducks in my year, then I would be the the stupid sister. No, but I I know I keep saying that, but and and it's really wrong for me to say it. But mm -hmm. this was me putting pressure on myself. I didn't want to be the one who didn't get ducks, but that's so unfair, right? Like it's like. But look at that! You yeah. achieved so much. I I did, but but I yeah it, well, I didn't have a fun, I didn't have a very good year at school that year. I'm just saying, it was incredibly stressful. Oh, maybe it only, made me stronger. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it did. maybe I can only imagine. Yeah. You know that that's um I guess that we could look at that as sort of indirect motivation perhaps, or maybe maybe too much pressure. Um, yeah, maybe. You, you achieved so much at a young age, and that's. It's such a wonderful thing. Hey, come on. Go, thank let, you. Thank you. I mean, it's a little, little, it's, pat, it's, little it's, pat on yourself. It's gone now. Yeah. It's it's, gone I don't now. have to worry about that. <laughs> that was years ago. That was, yeah. what, 30 years, 30, 20, 25 years ago. So I don't 10 have to years worry ago. about that. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Ten, I mean, 10 years ago. Yeah. 10. Yeah. 10. Wherever the conversation goes, I'm always excited where it would take, take us. But um, I want to kind of stay on this a little bit longer and go sure. to one of your early movies, which is uh, My Weddings and Other Secrets. Mm -hmm. Was there a lot of pressure to tell that story and to tell your parents that story and to share that story? Um, that one was a tough one with my parents. Like I, um, so I went to film school um, instead of medical school and um, they, they were okay with it actually because I was doing a conjoint um, science degree. So they were like, oh, that's all right if she... If she crashes and burns for her movie career, then at least I was doing a computer science degree. So very um, smart, you right, right. So they were like, oh, you can always get a job in IT. So they, so so they were they were fairly supportive of that choice. But um, so this is what I mean by I didn't I didn't know what my parents' love language was. I mm. I thought that they didn't love me. I thought that they were um, being mean and malicious. Uh, because when I um, I was in love with my boyfriend of five years, I'd been with him for five years, and I and I wanted to marry him, and they just were like, no, they were, and if you insist insist on wanting to marry him, then we might disown you. So I I, I was I was like I I didn't understand that having grown up in New Zealand, I didn't understand why they why why they would act this way. The only way that I could understand why they would do this is is that I figured that they didn't love me and they didn't mm. care about my well-being when in fact this is what i mean i hadn't decoded i had i didn't have the literacy to understand their modes of showing love um and so when i was going through this emotional turmoil some people might write in a diary some people might do a painting some people might punch a wall for me it was picking up a camera and uh, making a documentary mm -hmm. about it Right. And so that documentary, Banana in a Nutshell, went to the New Zealand Film Festival. And then at the festival, um, John Barnett, who was the, then the, 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 the head of uh, South Pacific Pictures, mm -hmm. which had made Sione's Wedding, and, and, and um, he was also behind Whale Rider. Um, uh, they, he, he came to me at the end of the screening and said, do you want to turn this into a feature film with you directing it? 
Um, so of course that. To, what did you a, say? I I I I think I just sort of stared at him, and then of course of course I said uh, yes, yeah. I I was like oh oh my god, like this is once in a lifetime opportunity. I think you never expect it's it's usually it's you having to go around and saying please will you make my movie. You you never get a um a production company coming to you and and asking you if you want to make the movie of your um autobiographical documentary that 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 doesn't happen often mm, mm. i don't think it happens i don't think it's happened since so or before so so it doesn't happen um yeah i'd have i'd have been pretty dumb not to um yeah. not to say wow. yes that's a great story such a beautiful story mm. to hear somebody took interest in your piece in your personal story and say hey this is worthy this is worthy yeah look at all the experiences that you as a young person <laughs> went through to get this going hey um i think this is a sign of a person being a fan so when they screened my um uh my wedding uh, the secrets in uh, honolulu at hawaii international film festival i totally missed it but i said no i'm late i'm just gonna go down to the movie theater and say hello to people there and so i did is that a sign of being a fan or crazy person. <laughs> so I went down there, the oh. filming, the film was all finished pile and then people were coming out and say, hey, how's it, how's it going? And I took a picture. Let me find the picture and, and see if I can send it to you. Uh, I know it's blurry. That's probably why I didn't send it to you in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I took a picture of the, the sign <laughs> of your film. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, oh, little, little backstory you. there. Oh, that's <laughs> I'll lovely. Try and find it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Okay, where am I going with this? Your story is so close to uh, some experiences that uh, I've gone through and know of others. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, I, I had pleasure. somewhere to go. I had somewhere to go with this. Oh, yes. That moment when um, you were asked, do you feel that that was, so when you were asked to, um, uh, to direct or to create My Wedding Out of Secrets, do you think that that was a, a, a highlight or would, would you think that moment sort of propelled this momentum for you? Because I know before we get there, other stuff that happened before, right? Mm -hmm. How much of a uh, significant moment was that for you? There was a huge moment, yeah. I mean, uh, you could say that being having my documentary accepted into the film festival um, was, a, was a really big moment. Um, uh, Bill Gosden, the director of the festival, recently passed away. And I owe I owe him, and so and so do many New Zealand filmmakers. We owe Bill um, so much because he cared so much about New Zealand stories and New Zealand film, and he showed he put it out into this world class film festival. So so that that was a turning point. Um, John Barnett coming to me at the end of the screening to say, did, did I want to make a movie of it of the of the documentary, was a turning point. And then and then I would say that. Um, the the movie did the movie showed it at um in Honolulu and it, and it did well in festivals and it did well in New Zealand theatrically yes. but then it stalled and um it didn't it didn't go anywhere it didn't it, it wasn't shown theatrically in any other country um and i i remember going to london to meet our sales agent so this is the these are this is the these are the people who are responsible for putting it out into the world mm -hmm. um they do deals with countries to see whether or not the project will be shown in theaters um or whether or how how it will be distributed through itunes or whatever mm -hmm. um and i said to them oh what other countries is is my film going to show in the theaters and they said it's not going to show in any other countries in the theaters i was like what and they said, no, it's not going to show, we're not going to put it out for theatrical. It's going to just go to iTunes. And I was like, why? And they said, because romantic comedies and dramas, no one goes to the theatres to pay for anymore. Um, and especially not if they don't have any stars in them. Wow. Which is like if you don't have Keira Knightley or Hugh Grant mm. in your movie, then you don't go to the movies to, you don't go to the theatre because you're looking at fifteen dollars um, plus a babysitter, plus parking, plus popcorn. Right, right, right. By the end of it, you know, if you're going with your partner, it's a hundred dollars plus. You want to go see a big movie. You want to see a studio movie with lots going on. You want to have a good time. Quiet, 
um, personal independent movies, you don't go to the theatre anymore. This was this was 10 years ago. This was back in 2011. And I would say that even the bad, even me feeling sad and bad at that meeting was a turning point. I think I learned something because they were right. They were absolutely right. Like when I go to the movies, I go to big movies. Mm-hmm. I go to see Batman. I see, <laughs> I saw Chris Nolan movies. I want to see Fincher movies. I want to see the big movies. I want to see action movies. Mm-hmm. And um, and it made me realize, you know, my first love was always action film. It was always Indiana Jones, um, Die Hard, uh, Star Wars. So those were the movies that I get really excited about going to the cinema to see. Wow, so really- that... We gotta grab a bunch of people and go to the movies with you. Take us your <laughs> top five uh, action movies. <laughs> right. It must be a great I mean, film yeah, to follow. You would be great. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I I love I lo- yeah. There and there there are very special movies that that mm-hmm. last the test of time. Like I watch Die Hard every Christmas. Uh, that movie never gets old. Like I love that movie so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, you, I realized at that moment I had to. Uh, I had to come back to my first love. My first love was always genre movies, was always action, um, maybe horror, sci-fi, but m- mainly action. Um, I grew up on a lot of uh, Jackie Chan, Golden Harvest, Hong Kong action cinema. Um, I, gr- I in, in the 90s, I was obsessed with Korean action cinema. Um, so that's, I realized that was a turning point. I mean, I, I loved making personal independent movies. I, I love drama and I love character, but I also love action. And um, I can, uh, just because it's not it's not normal for someone like me to make action movies just doesn't mean that I can't go after that, go after my, go after that. Um, yeah. I too enjoy the action films. Uh, about, <laughs> I want to talk more about that, but... Um... Oh yeah, <laughs> um, when those um, distributors or the agents that talk to you about um, your film not being uh, a theatrical release, that's got to be must have been a low uh, point because uh, you've had all these success, and for somebody to put a big wall in front of you, that's no good. Mm. Did you you didn't you did not consider stopping right there and then, right? Did I just give you another boost? I'm I'm gonna keep going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, if if anything, it was a reality check that I needed. Um, I needed to listen to that person. I don't. In fa- I don't bear any ill will towards mm-hmm. those people. In fact, I think I thank. I have to thank them for being honest with me, because right. if they hadn't said what they said, then I wouldn't be. In, you know, it wouldn't have led me down this path, which was that I need to think about why people go to the cinema. What is my responsibility to audiences when I make a movie that that I want them to go to the cinema for? Mm -hmm. If I was the kind of filmmaker that was like, no, I want to make the movies I want to make and I, and I want people to pay $15 to see it in the movie and then get really mad when they don't, Mm -hmm. then that, that just doesn't do anyone any good. Um, I have to think about what, why do people go to the movies? Why are they, why did they part with that money to go to see the movie? I have to provide a good time, you know, whatever that is. I have to provide spectacle. I have to provide really great story. I have to write great characters. I have a responsibility to the people who are paying the money to, um, to 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 put on a good show for them, um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's and, very and true. I needed to le- I needed to learn that. Yeah. Well, that is so true. Um, that actually, it reminded me of a friend talking to another friend, who said very talented, but he said, "I am an entertainer. I gotta give them, okay, this." Um, and where do you find the balance of giving that entertainment, but at the same time? <clears throat> telling your stories, telling your personal stories. Do you ever get into a um, moment where you talk to yourself, Roseanne, should I do this? Should I do that? Or what? How, how do you find balance again to keep, keep moving forward? Well, where do you go to to find that balance? 
Um, well, I mean, I mentioned meditation earlier, oh, yes. you know, and everyone talks about meditation and I think everyone gets a bit sick of meditation as well, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I think it is nice to um, have introspection and sit with yes. yourself and be like, I'm not going to sell myself out. You know, I'm not going to make hollow entertainment just for ambition or money or whatever, because mm-hmm. for me, cinema is truth. If, if you're uh, the best cinema for me always comes from a seed of truth and authenticity mm-hmm. and the worst cinema comes from ego and um, ambition and money like that, that just, just for me, you know, I understand there are lots of very popular mm-hmm. movies that lots of people love um, that are perfectly successful, but I'm not interested in those movies. I'm interested in movies that mean something that adds something to the conversation about who we are as a civilization and a society. I am, I agree when, I think it was Nina Simone who said that to be an artist is to be an activist, right? Like uh, we, we have a responsibility to not only to, um, of, of, as storytellers, but we have a responsibility to our fellow humans to say something that is important to the now. Um, So like, uh you asked me how do i keep myself um and be an entertainer i i think that um i've developed a really good gut (laughs) you know your 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 instincts are so important and your internal gauge of what is good and what is right and what is important uh, is so important and and i think that's that's something wonderful about growing older as well is mm-hmm. that your gut becomes even more sophisticated in figuring out what that balance is. Yep. Yep. So true. Yes. Hey, um, are you an activist? Do you think that the work you create has a form of activism? It's not activism. Mm. Um, I think, I think there's probably a, a, a spectrum of mm-hmm. activism. And I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, I I admire radical activism. I I really admire it, but I'm not, I'm not a radical activist. Um, To me, activism in the art is um, a layer, I guess, that I add. And it is, um, is something that I weave into the fabric of the work that I make. And I like to think that, everything I've made has that little layer mm-hmm. of activism, it has a little, it has a little edge to it. It has a little darkness or a little cynicism or something. It's got something in there, but it doesn't bash people over the head with, with activism. Right. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. good, I, th- I think good storytelling has many layers into it. And that's why we mm. go to those uh, stories or we keep going back to those stories. Mm. Um, hey, look, I know we're going to run out of time, but so I'm going to quickly push on. Give me your top, off top of your head, <laughs> your five go-to action flick, and then we're going to quickly go on to the film I like, Do No Harm. <laughs> uh-huh. What is those five top action flick you admire the most? Well, that, I mean, it's like it's like you asking what your them. top food, foods are, you know, like... Uh, okay, there's another I, question. <laughs> I, I, like a, I like a variety, you know, I love I love variety. Like, that, no. that, like what, that's... Um, so, so right now, and this will change every day or every course, minute, yeah. but right now, the, my go-to action movies, Terminator 2, Ooh. like you can't, you can't beat that movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. It's some, some of it has aged over time, but mm-hmm. like the spectacle, the action design, the intelligence of it, the, the mm-hmm. intellectual story of humanity, you know, if robots can learn the value of humanity, then maybe there's hope for us. That still means yeah. so much today. Um, and the emotional element, you know, mm-hmm. what a mother would do for her child, Sarah Connor and John yes. Connor, right? So, so that that movie you can't get past. Um, uh, so Terminator Two, Aliens, ah. Aliens, another another just great, you know, one woman, mm-hmm. a bunch of men, uh, just just against a monster. Yeah, just, who's who? Mm-hmm. Ah, it, I mean, yeah. just that action design, the one liners, the fun. Yes. The 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 yeah. The, I mean, the mother, the mother, the 
it, the whole motherhood theme yeah. of that of that movie is just incredible um what else um i, I have to put the matrix in there like i, I do love yes. i yes. love the matrix like the action design's amazing Good film. um it's it doesn't necessarily mean that i mean like i guess it does in that think for yourself um you know mm-hmm. but don't don't um don't let pe- other people tell you who you are or, or yep. um and un- unlocking your inner strength um mad max fury road is a recent example of one that i really love it's been mm-hmm. some such a such an incredible um action piece like mm-hmm. aesthetically it's incredible but then story-wise and character-wise it's, it's actually a very simple story but it's so beautifully executed um and then i mean not necessarily for the story but for the action design i have to say mission impossible fallout is um that that bathroom scene between henry cavill tom cruise and the asian man who's who was whose name i forget but was the stunt who's a stunt performer that bathroom action scene is one of the best action sequences of all time i saw that that. it just is it's the best and the helicopter sequence at the end that was shot in new zealand is is also one of the best um action sequences of all time that the character and the humor that happens during that helicopter sequence is is incredible wow those are very big top five from you yeah is that five i think that's five Mm -hmm. yeah there you go, folks. You've heard it right here. <laughs> Rosalie has <laughs> yeah. top five. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely, I think we should follow you next time we go to the movie theater. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, do no harm. Yeah. Uh, for me, as a fan, when I saw that, I did go, wow. The cinematic stuff that you put in there, the slow pacing of it, the quality uh, what i mean by quality um the the lighting i guess you just added a very nice touch to your piece and then your piece went boom said, what the? <laughs> this is roseanne's film oh my god <laughs> short film but it packed a punch uh cliche but to me it just yeah it started off like this and then boom i said oh i like this <laughs> You are an action fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Tr- truly, it's in my bones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you have little um, the sibling rivalry and where you guys trying to outdo each other physically or in sports or what you must have or no? No, that was the only that was oh. the only subject at school that we sucked at. We sucked so much at PE. We were so bad. Like honestly. <laughs> I was the always the last person to get picked for the team. I was always like the 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 the, the last person in the cross mm-hmm. country. The the shortest um like when we did long jump, I remember my classmates laughing at me cuz I couldn't jump at Aww. like I, I I was the worst jumper. Like I honestly, I we are physically like the only the only physical thing that I like is dance. Um mm. because I did because my mum made me do ballet. I actually love ballet. She didn't make me do it. I, I, I wanted to do it. But um, yeah, so, so that, that's the only physical pursuit that I feel any affinity for. But every, uh, like I hate sports. I hate them so much. I, I mean, I don't hate them. I hate them because I'm not good at them. Right, right. I, I, I appreciate. That. I appreciate why people like yeah. watching sports or why people like playing sports. But I, but I myself am not good. I'm not good. Don't don't pick me for your team. I'll I'll make you lose. No, you're you're in yeah. the team already. You're in a sportman <laughs> country there. And that's interesting because even Renee wrote a piece about rugby and ah, oh, I've forgotten her theater piece. Sorry, Renee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the last I remember I, I remember that. Yeah. That one. The um, first Asian rugby player or something. I think like, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So come on, the sport must be there with you guys. Just in well, as New Zealand as New Zealanders, yeah. where mm. sport is with us, but I have I have a very you know I have a very complicated relationship with rugby as a New Zealander. You know I of course because co- I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not good at it, <laughs> and and I think I'm I am very ambitious. If I'm not good at it, I don't do it. Like I'm not a, like a uh-huh. if I if I can't get pleasure from from being good at something, then I I just I'm not interested in it. So I, I, I mean, I, I understand why people love rugby. I, I understand 
uh, intellectually why rugby means so much to people. Like it's not just a sport, it's a religion. Yeah. Um, and that I can respect, but for myself, I don't watch rugby. I'm not, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm not, I'm one no. of these <laughs> traitor <laughs> New Zealanders that don't watch rugby. Yeah, yeah, no, I fully understand. I mean, when I have time, I watch it, but when I don't, I don't, because my other time is spent in the creative arts. In fact, this is a quick story. Um, when I discovered the performing arts, I stopped playing rugby. Right. I just, yeah, I just went, oh, wow. I like this. I like this feeling. <laughs> and I did a complete mm, and went to uh, the performing arts. In fact, um, I played rugby. When rugby was done in the afternoon, I dashed off to the theater. Oh, you're like station, Billy Elliot. Was, you're like. Uh, <laughs> not quite. Billy Elliot, he's, he's, he's right up here. I'm, yeah, I'm here with my moves. Oh. Yeah, I like, like Billy Elliot. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Sports, sports, um, yeah, that's one field to another field. Uh, can you please share your, um, your thoughts on uh, or the, how your short film Do No Harm came about? And I had a uh, message conversation with you a while back because you and your sister Renee talked about the Hippocratic Oath and the, can you sort of connect that with Do No Harm? And how it yeah, came so... Well, um, so I, I after after that thing that I was talking about, where um, the sales agent told me people don't go to the cinema to watch romantic comedies and dramas anymore, I I thought to myself, why do why do I go to the movies? I go to the movies because I like action. So I'm going to try and make action movies. So I started writing an action movie. I started interning with stunt teams in New Zealand to learn how action is put wow. together. Um, and uh, with the help of the Film Commission, and, you know, we have such a great um, public service uh, film commission here where they have a talent development and they pay for you to, to um, intern on, on so that you can learn about how things are put together. Mm -hmm. So I interned on a number of films and TV shows to learn how stunt teams put, you know, wow. from the script to to the final product, how they put uh, an action sequence together. Yeah. So while I was learning that, while I was interning and learning about that, I was also writing a action film, a new action film. Mm -hmm. um, and the Film Commission uh, also, I mean, bless them, they had some, um, a short film fund where you could make a proof of concept to um, get people interested in your feature film. So that's what Black Lotus was. Black mm. Lotus was a prequel to one of the characters in my feature film. And um, I, and then the medical, you know, I said before that um, uh, my sisters and my dad are, are doctors, specialists. Mm. And the middle sister, Rhea, who you don't know, who you haven't met yet, no. is, but, but you will. Maybe but but, in the future. but I've I've heard about her and she packs yeah. a punch as well. So yes. oh man, she she's possibly one of the one of the most impressive out of all of us. She is um, on she's out there fighting the fight in mm. surgery. She's a surgeon, and surgery is very male dominated. It's very machismo, uh, ego driven, um, and she's a this tiny. Asian woman, she's the smallest out, I mean, like she's the thinnest out of me and Renee. And, um, and she, but she's strong. Uh, she's, she's so strong. And, um, and so she was telling me actually one night, um, so the Hippocratic Oath um, is do no harm in Latin. Um, mm -hmm. um, first do no harm. And, and this is the Hippocratic Oath that you recite when you become a doctor. Um, and it is uh, talking about what your responsibilities are as a doctor. Mm -hmm. And the first line is um, first do no harm. And um, so she she was working one night in the ER mm -hmm. um, and she was the lead, uh, from what I understand, she was the lead surgeon on that night. This man comes in in a bad way. He's been attacked. He's been attacked by a group of people. Um, but it's not what you think. He's been attacked by a group of people because he took a child and threw the child off a bridge, killing the child. The child died. Wow. And and the mob tried to kill him because mm -hmm. of what he did. And and he was taken to hospital. And my sister is looking at this man, and she's a mother, and she knows what she's done, what he's done. And she said to me, she had to repeat the Hippocratic oath to herself because she she could have let him die. Mm -hmm. It would have been so easy not to treat him and let him die. Yeah. But her job 
as a physician was to first do, do no harm. And, uh, and so she, she saved his life. Um, that was her job. Wow. And, and I just found that ethical push and pull so interesting. And that's, that's made it into its way into the short film. <clears throat> that's some drama there. Yeah. That's some real drama there. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's the real deal, man. You know, she's the, yeah. she's well, the one on the, well, Renee and her are on the front lines, saving oh. people. What, hey, and you, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> and not, and the, three of you, three maybe. of you. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Or well, you're saving people through other avenues or other platforms. So, where has Do No Harm um, gone to the, its development? Uh, is it? Do you think you could do a TV web series of that? Or um, it, I think it was, it was a great short film. Oh, thank you. Um, Do No Harm opened doors for me in a way that I could never have imagined. Like you know how I was saying that. I well, I I want to make action movies and I want to make Hollywood action movies. Mm -hmm. It's when you when I think about Terminator, Aliens, Mad Max, yes. Fury Road, yeah. when I think about these movies, that ultimately I would like to make those movies. I think I'm capable of making those movies if I get the chance. I think so too. Right. So do no harm. Open that door because mm -hmm. of do no harm. Where it, it 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 opened at Sundance Film Festival and went to uh, South by Southwest. And these are big. These are big North American film festivals where all the agents and managers mm -hmm. go to find the new talent. And I signed, I signed with Hollywood management three years ago when the, when that movie came out, um, when that short film, 12 minutes. And I was able to get an, an incredible Hollywood uh, team together to represent me. And so that's how, that's how I made um, Shadow in the Cloud, which will hopefully come out next year at some point. And it's put me on this path to maybe becoming a Hollywood action director. Yeah. Wow, that, that's great. See, you are out there doing stuff. Well, Come we'll see. <laughs> pat, pat, pat yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, great short film. Everybody out there should go and see it. And everybody out there, well, here in Hawaii right now, please go and uh, this weekend watch Shadow in the Cloud. Your film. That's an action yeah. film, right? Yeah, it's an action thriller. It's not a, it's not a straight action. Ah. It's a, it's 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 a, it's a, it's got a thriller. It's got some horror elements. It's got a bit of social messaging. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a lot of things going for it. Yeah, well, it's got all those things that you just talked about attaching yeah. to that. That's great. So, what is that film about, and how, how has that has that shaped your view? in, in, in um, keeping yourself going. Um, is, this, is this a moment where you say to yourself, yep, I'm here, I'm gonna keep going. Has that changed your motivation somewhat? Yeah. Uh, it's only made my motivation stronger. Um, it's Aye. like I, uh, we, I, we were able to make an independent, well, it's, it's with a studio. So an independent slash studio Hollywood movie in New Zealand with New Zealand crew with American stars. Um, and w I mean, we'll see, we'll see how it does in the world when it comes out and in, in general release, but mm -hmm. I'm really proud of it. We made it, you know, across New Auckland and Wellington. We went to digital and Park Road Post um, wow. were helped uh, finish the film in post-production. We shot in Albany, like just in some office building in Albany with Chloe Grace Moretz and a bunch of um, really amazing. Uh, we we, we, shot, we shot with Bula Koale. Yes. Um, he he's a, he's in it. He's he's wonderful. He's a, mm -hmm. he's our, you know, he's he's a he's a homegrown star, right? He's a, he's the real deal. Yeah, he's um, done a few things. So, yeah. Yeah, he's he's an amazing, um, very very hardworking, but also and you know the classic humble, hardworking New Zealander, um, but yeah. but who really backs himself as well mm -hmm. and and has the talent to to really uh, go places. Do you see a reflection? Oh, I'm sure you have, or even in your parents when they when they back you guys by being stern. Do you see a reflection of you in when you work with those type of people when they believe in themselves, right? Mm. Is there some, do you see some sort of similarities to how you are backing yourself by going for it? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think so. Mm. I think um, self-belief is something that my parents gave me. Like they, well, I guess it was always in me. Like I, like I said, I think I was, I came out 
into the world a very um, ambitious and, and willful person, but they shaped the self-belief. They were like, you can do this, you can achieve it. And, and over the years, I've realized that um, that in itself is privilege. You know, we talk about privilege. It can be financial privilege. It can be um, socio, you know, so, social privilege. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the privilege of believing in yourself is a privilege because some kids grow up being told that they'll be nothing, mm -hmm. that they'll amount to not, nothing, then no one, you know, who do they think they are to think that they're going to achieve? I never had that. I never had that thing to overcome. And I work with people in the industry who did grow up without that privilege of self-belief. Mm. They've had to foster their own self-belief um, against the odds. Um, whereas my parents always had that self-belief and they always told me that they believed that I could do it. Um, so that's certainly something that I don't take for granted. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, almost everyone that I work with who is successful has self-belief has, I mean, it, but, and we also have that, um, imposter syndrome as well. Um, mm. like what if I'm not good enough? What if I'm just faking it? What if they one day they're going to see that I'm, that I'm just faking it. I think some of the, some of the best artists have that. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's almost a good thing because if I, if I was to just be like, I'm the best, I'm great, and I don't need to, I don't need to work any harder because I'm the best, mm -hmm. then my work probably wouldn't be very good. No. I think that it's how you know, with with balance, it is healthy to constantly be questioning yourself and being like, how do I do better? Mm. How do I improve? How do I um, level up? Because you can never, you can never get too high. There's always another level to go up. So, yes, exactly. So to, we got we got to keep going. Um, yeah, I have a feeling that there's a character in your uh, film Shadow in the Clouds that has self doubt and self belief. It could be the lead. It could be the other person. The other person. Don't give away too much, but ah. Uh, is there a character like that? I think you just described somebody in your film, and I'm intrigued. I'm going to watch it as well this, this coming weekend. Oh, but so you you haven't watched it? You... No. Um, uh, oh, I think there's a live viewing. I mean, in the theater, but I'm going to check it up on online. Oh, okay. Wait. Maybe it's only screening this coming weekend. Yeah. I got to do more. Well, research, when... but I have not seen. No, it. no, it's, it's fine. Coming. Yeah. When... Yeah, when when you do see it, you know, I think it's about this idea that um, cert, cert, certain people in society, um, uh, it, it's 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 about when you fall down, you get back up, and it doesn't mean it doesn't matter how many things come at you, like things keep coming. Like you think, just when you think it couldn't get harder, uh, more things keep keep coming at you, and yet you keep on persevering and. And what we, there are, we, we can't, everyone, every one of us has, I guess, superhuman or, or great wells of strength inside of us that we haven't unlocked. And I think this movie talks about all the messy, undignified ways that, um, that we can access that strength inside of ourselves. That I know that sounds a bit airy fairy, but, um, mm -hmm. It's a, I mean, it's a pretty fun movie as well. I, I want you to go in expecting a good time. Like it's not serious or earnest. It's, uh, it's, it's set in the very dramatic, serious um, time, right? It's set in a dramatic time. But if you go in thinking you're going to see a war movie about history, then you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> ah. I think, I think you have to go in expecting popcorn, you know, just, just, <laughs> just expect a popcorn movie. Uh-huh. And I and I think you'll have a good time, yeah. But okay. but if you go in thinking it's serious or earnest, you're not. You're going to be disappointed, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, it's I'm just it's just a fun it. movie. Yeah, fun is yeah. good. Fun yeah. action, bit of drama. You mentioned a bit of horror. Yeah. How much different type of genres did you put into this film? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> all of the all of the genres. All of them. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> we, it was um, it was a project. I didn't I didn't um, I didn't write I didn't originally write it. It came from another yeah. writer, and in, um, so uh, I didn't work with him. He I got the script after he'd sort of 
that moved on from that project mm. um so i i worked on it and i guess i made i i with with my team and with the actress with with chloe we worked on the script together and we made them this movie our own yeah. oh excellent and you guys tweaked stuff how much of a tweaking did yeah, you guys we tweaked it oh, okay um significant significant um probably not on a structural level mm -hmm. but um but certainly on a character and depth and tone and theme level we we worked hard on that script yeah uh -huh. for someone going to oh, you just told me but i'm going to ask you again uh, for someone going to watch this film what do you think they will get out of this film shadow in the cloud just a really good story just a right. good time um mm -hmm. yeah it's uh I would like to think that it makes you think. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about a certain um, part of the war effort in World War Two. You know, you, you, there's lots of World War Two movies, yes. but I didn't. I didn't even know that female pilots were a thing during World War Two. Um, okay. And in the research of this project, I realized that there, you know, by the end of the war, the Allies were running out of um, male pilots. Wow! So they started training women to mm -hmm. to transport. Um, transport planes and these women would put in like you know hundreds of hours of flying um mm -hmm. by themselves without sometimes they'd land at night without runway lights because because of um oh. because of the war because of yeah. i don't know lack of resources or because of um fear of being seen mm -hmm. um and and so i you know i it, it, it you'll go into it thinking that um learning something about history but it's not it's not historical I, I, it's not a war movie it's not it's not about history <laughs> and and i can't stress this and that enough it's not a lest we forget war movie um but it's a bit like indiana jones i guess like uh, why why would anyone go to indiana jones yeah. um you go to an indiana jones because you go for the story you go for the fun mm -hmm. you go for the tension you go for deep character um you go for empathy you know um it doesn't matter that the lead character is a female i think men can watch this movie and understand it and enjoy yes. it yeah yeah and yeah. you mentioned chloe uh, previously how much of a uh, uh, well we're talking about the writing and the tweaking how much input did, did she have into that part of it she was a she was a, a partner yeah i mean she um she was a collaborator, I guess. She has very strong ideas about, um, well, you know, what's good. Like she's she she believes in um, um, activism, in mm. being in being defiant, um, in going against the status quo, and 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 speaking up. Um, so certainly, when we were talking about this project. Um, I was working, I was redrafting it, but mm -hmm. she would come in with ideas and we'd change the dialogue. Sometimes even on the day that we were shooting, she'd come, we'd, we'd talk about ways to change the dialogue and change the meaning um, of, of what we were trying to say. Yeah. What does this film mean to you? And, um, go, go for it. I think this film is about how we can be superheroes, but not in, but, but messy. <laughs> yeah. it, it, because being, being strong and sticking to what you believe in isn't always dignified. That, that, that's what I, that's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, it's okay to be vulnerable. Yes. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, um, she's not, I mean, like the, the main character isn't the, the best person. She's not Wonder Woman. She's not, she's not all noble and good and all perfect. She's not perfect at, by any stretch of the imagination, but she's still heroic and inspirational. And I think that's not, that's a nice thing to know. Like you don't have to be the best, per, the best version of version of yourself to be a superhero. I think, I think um, superheroes come in all different shapes sizes and um behaviors yep it sounds like to me that this film is not just about the main character 
or the story isn't just about her, but it's for everybody. I, I yeah, it's to, about I, society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to take away from her story, but it is her story. But it does feel like that she's helping everybody. Um, she no, here, she right? is selfish. No, I mean she is selfish. Oh. Yeah, she's. I mean. She is selfish. I, I'm, I mean, I, I'll be interested after you watch the movie. Yeah. She's not perfect. She's not. <laughs> she's not noble. That's a good character then. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, she's just a good Yeah, she is a good character. And she, and that's, I think there needs to be, well, I, I like to see characters that I haven't seen before. I haven't seen, I haven't seen someone like her before. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to checking it out this weekend. I believe it's this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Let me know. I just got confirmation of this this weekend. <laughs> oh, good. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, go all the way back to your itty bitty days. Did you have a, um, a, that moment? I'm talking about itty bitty days. Did you, was there a spark that said, Roseanne, as you're talking to yourself again, Roseanne, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do when I grow up. To me, your achievement, uh, evolution or development, big, 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 big time. And I'm glad to have seen some of that stuff. And hey, I met you at Arteo Center and here you are. <laughs> <laughs> so when was the little moment that you said to yourself, Roseanne, I'm going this way? Uh, you mean in film or just? Um, well, yeah, but you know, in life, your, your achievements. Yeah. Achievements. I. I don't know. I mean, I. I've always. Uh, I've always. I've always been ambitious. I think. Um, I've always wanted to. Do my best. I think. Ah, yes. I've. I've always wanted to strive to to, to to see to see where I, I can go. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think I've always been like that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I really, you know, I think maybe the turning point for film was when I gave up medical school, where I think, yeah, the moment that I was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to go to medical school. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit to becoming a filmmaker um, and I better not fail because... Um, I think this is something that my tutor told me, who's now a really good friend of mine, Shuchi Kotari. Um, she said to me that when she was teaching me um, mm -hmm. in, in undergrad at university, she th this was always the, something that I wanted to do. Like that, there, there was no and there was no question about whether I was going to get there. It was really a win. Um, so I think I once I set my heart on something. I, I go for it and I, and I don't, um, yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily, I mean, I, like I said, I stuff, I suffer from self doubt as well. I, there's self belief, but there's always, there's also self doubt. And I think, I think the thing, maybe the thing that motivates me is that if, and this is something that I do now, actually, um, that I realized that when I was a kid, I was um, I, I lived on external validation. I needed mm. an A plus to tell me that I was good. Mm. I needed an award to tell me that I was worth something. But now I've I've sort of tried to make myself if if I if no one sees my movie, if if no one likes my movie, if 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 I don't if I don't get success or or accolades or external validation for my movie. Would I still do it? And the answer has to be yes. You, you know, there's the I, I have to do it for myself. I, I do it because um, I love the work, because I enjoy the work, because I enjoy working away at something, because the journey, you know, it's that classic trope, which is the journey is the reward and everything else is icing. Yep. So, it ha so I have to enjoy the journey. If I don't enjoy the journey without the validation, um, if I don't enjoy the journey without the validation, then there's no point going on the journey. I, I truly believe that. 
Um, and so if everything I do now, I'm, I ask myself, if this, is, if this is a flop, if this is a failure, would I still be doing this? And um, yeah, I, if, everything that I'm working on now, I love so much that it, I don't even need it to be a success. Of course, I want it to be a success. I want people to see it, mm-hmm. but, um, but, but, I'm, but I'm, enjoying the, I'm enjoying the journey. And it's a wonderful journey. Wow. Thank you. It, it's been pretty wild so far. Yeah. And keep going, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much. It's a wonderful uh, moment to end this conversation with you. Uh, I actually found it very heart, uh, heartwarming uh, to hear oh. your stories and to, um, this is about you, it's not about me. <laughs> no, it's about uh, all of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Motivation comes from everywhere, I guess, um, from my family and friends and also externally from other people, but inside. And I'm glad to hear you say that you told yourself, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go take this path. And I'm glad you took that path. I do not know you, you quit um, medicine studies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't start. I um. But I was I was accepted into medical school. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And my sisters actually, I have to I have to give credit to Renee and Rhea mm-hmm. for um, not stopping me, but but questioning me, saying, "Why are you going to medical school?" And I said, "I don't know. I'm doing it because you're doing it." And they said, "That's not a good reason to become a doctor." So, yeah. Well, I'm glad. See, so sibling love is. Yeah, nice. sisters. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, sisters. Well, thank you so much, Roseanne. I'm going to uh, quickly close this and then we'll say goodbye. Um, okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, it is hoped that with our guest, when they share their story, that it encourages you or motivates you to go for it and to stay inspired. Okay. You keep going. You can do it. Climb that mountain and then sing us a song from the top of the mountain or even keep going okay so i really today i really enjoyed this conversation with uh Rosalie liang ah it was very very heartwarming and um folks friends and family please uh give my good friend here a huge applause from wherever you are as i like to say thank you to uh Roseanne. Kia ora, Roseanne. thank you so much for your time thank you Mesa. thank you aloha bye <laughs>